The East African community region is rich and endowed with flora and fauna, which attracts millions of tourists into the region. Lakes, rivers and mountains are habitats of some of the animals like gorillas that fetch billions of shillings into an economy like Uganda and Rwanda. Environmental experts are concerned that by 2050, the region is likely to lose about 89,000 hectares of its forest cover if nothing is done to protect and conserve them. Up to 89,000 hectares of forest uh, could be lost by 2050, uh, given that deforestation is prevalent even within protected areas. A survey conducted by the East African Community Secretariat shows that the region is said to lose about 11 billion US dollars annually, or about 40.7 trillion Uganda shillings, if nothing is done to protect its environment. Or 11.3 billion. Uh, that was uh, the major finding of the study. U.S. dollars that we are likely to lose if we don't really protect uh, these uh, landscapes. And therefore it's important that if we lose now 11 billion uh, U.S. dollars that annually come from these landscapes. This is a big loss in terms of job uh, revenues. But also we want to see how we can triple this if we protect the environment because they have a lot of potential. We can triple the income from 11 billion to close to about uh, 35 billion U.S. dollars. The survey was launched by the East African Committee Secretary General Dr. Peter Mathuki at COP28 conference on climate change happening in Dubai, United Arab Emirates. But if we lose because of climate change, these landscapes, it means that we have everything to lose as East African community. And therefore, we had brought together our development partners here on the sidelines of COP28 so that we can work together. We have to remove those things that cause climate effects. We have to stop uh, the cutting of the forests. We have to stop the degradation of the wetlands. We have to stop the, desil the, the, the silting of the rivers and lakes. And we have to give the, the, a new life to the biodiversity that uses these landscapes. We are here to make sure these food challenges we are having currently called by FAO no longer food security, because there is no security at all, especially as far as Africa is concerned as a continent. They are now called food systems, and you need transformation. So I'm here to echo my voice to the previous speakers and also commitment that supporting a small-scale subsistence production will support this community most. We can talk of improvement, leaving just behind small-scale farmers. We really don't uh, have a good study, a good structure on how to adapt and how to build the resilience of our partner states. We will lose more. Uh, uh, Honorable uh, Mushimuya Sami Sulu went back to Tanzania because of what is happening, the flooding and the landslides also, which is happening in one of the region, and this is not new. The experts have warned that if no action is taken to conserve the ecological zones in the region, Hundreds of people are likely to remain jobless and thousands will end up into starvation. COP28 in Dubai has attracted hundreds of youth all over the world calling on world leaders to walk the talk. Our youth have played and are still playing a critical role in the protection and the conservation of our environment. Today being a youth day here at COP28, my call to world leaders is to equip and engage young people in climate change decisions and processes. What do we want? Jingo Francis, NTV in Dubai, in the United Arab Emirates.